So in version 1.1 of Projector Simulator, you'll notice that we no longer have a single image that we can put in our projector script. Uh, we can now put an array of images. For example, I have these presentation slides here. And I've imported these into Unity, and I've checked the read-write enabled. And all I have to do is click on my projector and lock the inspector so that I can select these without the inspector moving to the properties of my slideshow images. And I'll click on the first one. Actually, this is the first one. And I'll click on the others. And then all I have to do is drag and drop them onto the images word. And we see we get all of the slides added to the projector. And we still have the empty one there originally, so I can just delete that one. So we can now adjust the preview image index value. So we can adjust which image we're previewing. Uh, you see we can still play with the shift values on the projector and the throw ratio. Uh, now we have the image interval, which is the amount of time in seconds to show each image. So if I click play now, you'll see that these images are changing every second. Uh, we have here, of course, settings for whether we want it to loop. So if I uncheck loop, then it will stop on the last slide. Uh, and we have play on awake. So if we do not want it to play straight away, then we just untick that and you can trigger it whenever you like. On the subject of control, we have this other test scene now, which is a demonstration of how you can control the projector dynamically in your game. Uh, we can press P to pause or play the slideshow. We can set the projector to show a specific slide or image. Uh, we can jump to the next image and we can do that when it's paused as well. And space, we can turn the projector off and on. And all that is doing is enabling and disabling this projector sim script component. So if you want to start your level with the projector off, then you just untick this box and then you can trigger it whenever you like. Maybe when the player walks into the room, whatever you feel like. Now that we have this array of images and the time we can set to show each image, um, what we can actually do is create the illusion of motion. In other words, we can have some quite simple videos if we broke down a video into individual frames. Uh, here I have Big Buck Bunny open in virtual dub. And this is a 1920 by 1080 video at 30 FPS. And what I'm going to do is just choose a subset of frames to export to run on my projector. So maybe when he's just looking up at the butterfly because there's a, you can create quite a reasonable loop. Uh, so I'm going to click this button to set the first frame the in frame and then we fast forward a bit until he sees the butterfly again and now what we can do is we can go to video frame rate and I'm going to choose process every other frame so this is a 30 FPS video. I'm going to export every other frame, so we will play it back in the projector at 15 frames a second. I'll go to File, Export Image Sequence, file name BBB for Big Buck Bunny, uh, suffix, we'll make it a JPEG, and quality, I don't know, 50. Directory to hold should be an empty folder in your project to house all of the frames you're going to import. And I'll just click OK. And we'll wait for the frames to export. 
you don't have to use virtual dub you can use any other tool you you feel comfortable with it's just this one is a, a free open source one online and there we go so now when we go back to unity the frames will be imported and it might take a while 1920 by 1080 is probably a bit bigger than we would need for a video because normally in your project you will want to save space and smaller images equals less space taking up. We will see when this is done why you may want to reduce the size of your images. Okay, so that took a few minutes and we now have our imported frames. You see we are going from zero, frame zero all the way down to frame 470. And if you notice, um, each one of these images is taking up 1.3 megabytes. Uh, so that is, let's do some quick calculation, 1.3 times 470. So 611 meg these images are taking up. So if I built this project now, then the data folder would be 600 megabytes larger than it would have been. Obviously that's not ideal, uh, luckily there are some things we can do to reduce the size of the image that Unity uses. Uh, first thing we're going to do of course is, uh, I'm just working on one image for now because it's, it'll be faster to apply the changes until I'm happy with the size. So the first thing I'll do is check read write enabled, and that won't affect the size, but I will now uncheck generate mitmaps. And you see that's reduced it to 1.0 megabytes. Alpha source as well is not needed. If you've got an alpha channel on your on your image, then that may also reduce the size. Uh, non power of two. Uh, it's you can experiment with this a bit. Uh, so we have currently we're at two hundred four eight by one hundred two four at one point zero megabytes. So if I change that to none, then it will go back to nineteen twenty by ten eighty, and it's still at one point zero. So it hasn't made much of a difference. But here is where we can really drastically reduce the size: is this use crunch compression. So at 100, it's 347 kilobytes, and at zero, it's 154. Anyway, let's say that we're happy with those settings. So that's 154 kilobytes for this one image. And that's using crunch compression, zero quality, power of, uh, power of two. Let's see if that makes a difference now. So if we go to nearest, 154.8 to 156.3 and the fact that the image is now being stretched into two by one aspect ratio then we are losing some quality as well so let's leave that at none so let's see how we do when we apply those settings to the other images so i'm going to select the first image scroll all the way down hold shift and click the last image and again i'm just going to click read write enabled Took a second to select all those images for some reason. So I'll, I'll tick read, write, enable. I'll untick generate mipmaps. Uh, no alpha. Uh, non power of two, none. Compression, normal. Use crunch compression, yes. And quality, zero. And that will take a few minutes to apply. Okay, so that actually took about 15 minutes to apply. Anyway, now what we have to do is select our projector. Um, I'll, I'll revert this value to the prefab. I'll hit Control A to select all of the images. And then I'll just drag and drop them onto... Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't lock the inspector. So again, Control A, drag and drop and delete the empty one. And I'll collapse this array and I'll take it out of 4K mode, otherwise it will drastically increase our level load time. Uh, let's set it at 512. Let's see how we do on that. You can see 256, 512, 1024. I'll leave it at 512 and see how we do. So now we've added all those images, uh, you'll see that we can take the preview image index value and we can scrub through the video to find a preview frame that's suitable for us. 
Um, finally, the image interval, because this is 15 frames a second, we no longer want each frame to last one second, so I'll just open up the calculator. And we do 1 divided by 15 frames a second equals 0 0.66666667 seconds for each image. Control-C, Control-V, as close as it can get, and I'll hit play. And you see it has added a few seconds to our level load time. Now you see we are projecting a video in colour. And there's our loop. So you saw how much time that added on to the level of load time. The best way to reduce that is either by projecting a grayscale image instead, which will roughly cut the time into a third, or if you really need a colour image, we can try dropping down to 256. It depends on the quality you need. Obviously, if you're dropping down to this sort of resolution, then it really does not make much sense at all to start with a 1920 by 1080 image. And starting with a smaller image will also decrease the level load time. So you can see you can still kind of make out what's going on in the film. It's not an unreasonably low quality. And just to see what it looks like, we'll try 128. Now that is quite pixely. But of course here we are up close, so it depends how far away the player is going to be. It's all about finding the right balance. So there you go, that is how you use Projector Simulator to project colour videos in Unity. You can find some more detailed information in the manual, or else you can always contact us if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.